let's start with um, questions from chapter 10 in preparation for you to get your homework done tonight. Not last night, but tonight. Let's start with questions for chapter 10, which is about photosynthesis. Anything, anyone? Um, I didn't see anything in the video about like C4 plants, C3 plants. So are we not worrying about that or? We are not worrying about that. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't think there's any in the anything in the homeworks about that either. Um, there are things that, um, did I put that in the reading? Yeah. Okay, if I did, I, I didn't mean to. It's hard not to list everything for the reading because I do feel like almost all the time you should read the whole chapter, like read the whole story, so to speak. So, um, but I'm pretty sure there isn't any, there's anything or very little in the homeworks about C3 and C4, and there won't be uh, anything on the exam, that lab, the exam about C3 and C4 differences. Anything else? Uh, okay, so part E of question one. So there were, is, is that where you're stuck? Um, you don't have to type that all out. We'll just, I can just go to the, um, I can share my screen with you and we can go to Canvas. And I think I can call up the activity. Well, we'll see if I can call up the activity. So do you remember which um, item it was in? Because I know most of them had multiple parts. Um, it actually the last one. In the last one? Yes. So you're, you read the article, right? Yes. And then it's part E. Yes, that one. So what, what was the assumption that um, came out of the article, like at the conclusion of the article? Which did you choose for your answer? So for the first time, I picked A, and it was wrong. And the second time I tried again, I picked B, and it was wrong again. So I'm not sure, sure which one is the best one. So then in the article, did they separate out the... Um, recommendations and who was getting more fit men compared to women? I don't think so. Okay, so, well, so let's take a look at um, the article then real quickly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because that's what it indicates to me. It indicates to me that the article specifically had a difference between men and women, if that's one of the choices. And if you choose the other two choices and both of them were incorrect, then my suspicion is that the article had something to do, so exercise more with age, blah, 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 yeah. Uh, requirements for healthcare, right? Blah, 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 blood sugar, for health reasons, an epic choice. All right, let's go back to where we saw the people in the pub. I think I can, well, let's just pick the other answers and see what happens. Let's look at the article and let's just go back. So more, I think it's probably, let's just click this one and see what happens. 
that looks like it's the correct answer. So I didn't read the whole article just now, I just skimmed through it, right? But my suspicion would be that there was somewhere in that article, they said that men are more likely to go to the gym, or men are more likely to set exercise requirements and meet them. I mean, I, like I said, I didn't read the whole article specifically. Oh, wait, does it just complete? It doesn't tell me if it's right or wrong, does it? How do I know if I got it right? So when you guys do this, if you choose the wrong answer, what happens? For me, the same thing happened. It just had completed and I could never actually see what answers I got wrong. For me, it wasn't until I completed both of my, um, like the both of the attempts I had that it showed me all the answers. Yes, that's how it works. So you're right on that. And I think you have to complete a whole question. Like this is all, like this is all about whatever this is, activity five or the last one, uh, the last seven of seven. If you only do parts of this and then don't finish it, I think they don't tell you if you're right or wrong. I think you have to finish the whole um, little topic in order to know. See, I didn't finish the rest of it, so. Let's see, I'll just go through and get wrong answers. Research indicates which is the following last time. I guess I should read the article, but it says how to get fit without busting a gut. So my suspicion is that you don't need to be as intense, right? Does not change. Intensity does not change how much time is needed to read. The, I'm gonna say that's I'm just guessing. You're a personal trainer, you help your clients with and fitness and least amount of time, which is the following is most important to discuss with them. Intensity is working well. Uh, I'll say that one. All right. Which of the following is true for most people? That's true. Oh, no, not that. Those both go down. All right, they're trying to get you. 60-year-olds, uh, you know, which of the following activities? Sarcopenia, so. Um, what is sarcopenia? Did you guys look it up? I don't teach anatomy and physiology, so what's the answer? The answer is yoga. Yoga, so she's got, um, gonna break her bones, is that what it is? Or she's got like, all right, so, and then I have to click submit each time, right? Yes. Otherwise it won't take them, all right. And which one were we guessing for this one? More men, let's say that, more men, and we, I already hit submit, that's that complete. Okay, so let's go back to the assignment and see if, Oh, it says practice. <laughs> because I'm the instructor, it won't let me do it for real. All right, I'll figure that out, but I don't know right now. Um, and again, my guess, Nyan, was they were just trying to get you to see, to because you guessed the first two and you got both of them wrong, my suspicion is that they were looking for you specifically in the article. And if we read the article, I'll read the article during my office hour today rather than hold us all up for this whole time. I'll read the article again during my office hour and see if there isn't somewhere in here that it um, distinguishes between men and women. Okay. Yeah. My suspicion is that's, that's what it is. You had to read the article very carefully. I can't resist. Right. I also have a question for the um, quiz for chapter ten, nine. Sure. Um, on it was in uh, a set of questions for uh, two. Let me go back. Okay, so I learned this one, one of five inputs and outputs with the tutorial. Yes. Yeah. Um, all the way down at the 
inputs and outputs for oxidative phosphorylation. I thought I put them in correctly and it told me I was wrong. This last one here, right? Not that one, the one above it. Okay, cellular locations available. Mm -hmm. So D. Um, yeah. No, it was uh, number two. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. So careful because it's got net, net, and not either. Mm -hmm. Right? So that would be my, um, the tricky part. Oh, I'm going to repeat and look in my book because usually I just try to do it off the cuff. I would get it wrong. So specifically for oxidative phosphorylation, which would be this part. All right, so glucose. So did you put the glucose here? Not? Yes. And pyruvate there? Yeah. All right, so it would be NADH as an input. NAD would be an output. Um, Acetyl-CoA, nope. Water, probably. I usually don't list that in my outputs, but yeah. Carbon dioxide. Not for this one, no. No, no CO2 in the last, in the oxidative phosphorylation port, portion. Krebs cycle, yes. Oxygen, got to go in. Coenzyme A, no. ADP output. Do I have more choices out? No, wait. The, the, Mm, no, ADP input, ATP output. Let me put it in there. All right, so is that what you had? No, I ended up putting the CO2 in the output, so I that's, that's probably it. Wrong. Yeah, that's it. So because this is just for the oxidative phosphorylation portion, the last step, right? No CO2 there. And when you strip it down to just this, you're just like, oh wait, that's more simple than I thought, right? Because remember, it's the hydrogens that are doing all the work, the pumping of the hydrogens across the membrane, and then them getting pumped back in ATP synthase. So there really isn't very many molecules that are driving this. This is the main driver, the NADH and the um, oxygen, right? Oxygen from the air that you're breathing, or if you're, you know, a frog, the oxygen you're getting through your skin, and the NADH that's coming from all the, from collecting up all of the outputs of your um, breaking down glycolysis, get a little bit of NADH, prep step, a little bit of NADH. Most of the NADH is generated in the citric acid cycle. So that's the real driver of most of the ATP production. For oxidative for phosphorylation, is that like the um, electron transport chain? It is technically the electron transport chain plus ATP synthase, the process that ATP synthase uses to produce the ATP. They call it chemiosmosis because water is produced at the end, right? To try to help you relate it to osmosis and chemi because that ATP synthesis is driven by protons being forced through ATP synthase, being forced through that enzyme. No protons, no ATP. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I personally don't usually use those particular words oxidative phosphorylation and chemiosmosis very frequently during the videos and on my note outlines. I find it's another layer of vocabulary that for me, it's, it's totally a personal preference. For me in bio one, it's not that important. Um, I don't use those words in genetics. I don't use those words or that combination of words in microbiology. I don't think a lot of the anatomy and physiology professors use them. It's 
it's one of those super technical um, areas that they're like, oh, here's another vocabulary word we can make them learn. And I, it, by this time, I feel like I've had enough. So um, I don't use those words. I don't, I, and I, I don't want to say I promise they're not on the exam because I can't, right? I can't. I don't want to say that and then, you know, have it not be true. But I, I wouldn't expect to see them very often, if at all, on the exam. How's that? Okay, so with photosynthesis, is yes. the hydrogen ion concentration building up in the cell and in cellular respiration, is the hydrogen ion concentration building up outside the cell? All right, Allison, hang on a second. Let me, um, let me get that picture up. Okay. See if I can go back here. It's Aylin, by the way. Oh, sorry. It's, the S is silent. It's silly. <laughs> I keep calling the S. Well, it makes sense. I get that a lot. Just a Lynn. Okay. There. I wrote it down phonetically. Now I won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. Let's go here and see if in chapter 10, did I put uh, PowerPoints up? No. Let's go to the read then. So I'm just going to jump to the book um, uh, for chapter 10 and look at that look at that picture of the. I I dislike it that they have it so um, compartmentalized in the book and I can't just flip through right, but I think this is what I'm looking for here. Cyclic electron flow. takes it a while it's thinking. Nope, I don't think that's the picture I want either. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Let me make you guys miniature over here. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one I want. The comparison of the uh, this might help me more. Not this group. It's four ten point three ten point two. How do I just go to the next page? If I click this, it jumps to the next. Is that, that just the next page? Yeah. Can you tell I don't read the book online? <laughs> I'm looking for that picture. It's figure uh, 1018 in your book. That's the picture that I'm actually looking for. Because that's kind of the big summary picture. I thought it was here. It should be then this next one. Yeah, I think it's in this one. This one, right? Aha, yes, this is the picture I'm after. All right. If I click this, is it going to make it go away? Mm. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so I just got the picture. This is what I'm after. You guys can all see that, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So, What's a little bit different from the mitochondria is in this case, here inside the chloroplast, right? So this green, these green stacks, those are the thylakoid membrane, and this is one of those thylakoid membranes. So the protons are building up technically in the stroma out here, right? Low hydrogens, they're, they're from the light energy from the sun, the molecules that are being reduced are pushing the hydrogens from the stroma into the thylakoid space. So the proton concentration is high inside this little um, 
donut inside this little package here, that's where the proton concentration is high. And then ATP synthase, it's almost as if it's it, it's almost as if it's the opposite of inside a mitochondria, right? Because in the mitochondria, the protons are building up in between the inner and outer layers of the mitochondria, inner, inner and outer membranes. But in the chloroplasts, the proton concentration is high on the inside in the thylakoid space, and then that's going to drive the ATP synthase because the protons want to move from those higher concentration to lower concentration. So it's still called, we still call it chemiosmosis. Water is going to be produced, not nearly as much, like hardly any, you don't get a lot of water back, which is why it's not in this picture, right? Because we're splitting the water to get those hydrogen items in the first place. We're going to get oxygen released that's going to go back out into the environment so that all the animals can use it for cellular respiration. And this is where that high concentration of hydrogen is. So this would be the low pH. This would be the more acidic compartment, the thylakoid space, compared to the stroma. Do they show you the, um, they give you the, how do I make this go away? Mm. Don't give me any controls. There's an X in the right. Where? I don't, I don't, oh, I don't have it. Oh, way up at the top? No, no, on the image. I can see it. It's, it's I can't. The... It's blocked by okay. the Zoom things, I think. Oh, wait, down a little bit more. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah, it's right where you, where it says your name talking. Okay. So I can't access. Oh, there it is. There we go. I moved those over. All right, so did they show you the, um, did they give you the mitochondria right after that, if they're gonna ask you to compare them? No, of course not. All right, that looks like something I should draw then. Let's stop this, and let's just put this over here. And it looks like I lost my internet connection. Great. All right, sorry about that, guys. Looks like I lost my internet connection. There's some construction going on behind my home. Hopefully this isn't going to happen very frequently. That freaked me out. You're all still there, yes? No, yes? Yeah. Okay. I think I was trying to do, I think my computer didn't like I was trying to do too many things at once. Okay. It doesn't look like a good day for the blackboard, so I'm going to switch it over to the white. going over because of it's really important for the test. So let's see if I can find a green of some sort. Right. 
So inside the chloroplast, we have those stacks of phylicoid membranes with little tubes connecting them to other stacks of phylicoid, right? And so in that picture that we were just looking at, it's a big blow up of a single phylicoid like this, right? And phospholipid bilayer here. And chloroplast, of course, has an, an outer membrane, an inner, and then the phylicoids are the innermost. There's lots of phospholipid bilayers inside the chloroplast. So here are the phospholipids, phosphate heads, lipid tails. Right, like that. And then, like in your book, we have the photosystems sitting here, and I'll try to make them purple. I'll kind of make those look like this. All right, we have those photosystems sitting there with all of the chlorophylls embedded in them. So photosystem, this would be photosystem two, of course, which comes first. Don't ask me why, it just does. There's chlorophylls in there. And it's the photosystem when it gets excited by the light energy from the sun. Right, so there's the light energy from the sun hitting the photosystem. Two electrons, pair of electrons are going to get, all the chlorophylls are going to get excited. But the special chlorophylls in the center are the ones that are going to throw up a pair of electrons, two electrons. And they're going to go get passed down a very short electron transport chain, shorter than what we had for, how do I get to, I think it only put three things on it, All right, a couple things, short electron transport chain that isn't super accurate, my apologies, and then we have a set, we have photosystem one sitting here, All right, so this is photosystem one, photosystem two, those electrons are passed, 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 passed. They are going to end up at, proteins are all passing electrons. They're gonna end up replacing the electrons from photosystem one. They get excited also by light from the sun. Put my yellow back on here. So they're also getting excited by the sun. Chlor fills are getting excited and a pair of electrons are going to get pushed out and they're going to form NADPH. So they're going to be reducing NADP to NADPH electrons plus a couple protons there. Put them in a square. Right? At the same time, just like before, Protons are being pumped by some of these proteins from the water molecule that was split to replace the electrons at photosystem two. Some of those protons are being pumped into this thylakoid space here. Those are the protons that we're going to use to fuel ATP synthase, which kind of looks like this that hook on the side of it, right, to make ATP. ATP, happy yellow sun. And we don't have uh, particular numbers here because this is happening in such tiny amounts. This is happening in such tiny amounts and that we don't have numbers to write down. We can't say, like, we can't say five ATP or six ATP. So it's a little bit different than when we were discussing cellular respiration, because there aren't, there aren't exact numbers for this. Now, compared to our friend, the mitochondria, so the mitochondria has almost the same shape as the chloroplast because they were both at one time bacteria, right? They're descendants from bacteria, but the mitochondria is slightly different in that the inner membrane, it only has two membranes, the inner membranes all folded up like this, right? So 
So if we blow up a piece of that, and we just look at the phospho, so the, all of the electron transport chain is in this, I'll try to make it this purple. You know, I probably should have made it larger. Sorry, I wasn't looking at how it was turning out for you. All the proteins of the electron transport chain are embedded in that inner membrane and it just repeats. So there's another set of them over here and another set of them over here, and another set of them over here. So in this case, right, the proton concentration for this little electron transport chain, the proton concentration is higher on this side of the membrane than this side, but over here it's from this little bubble to the other bubble, right? I don't know if I made it worse or better. No, Aileen, yeah, you got it right. Yeah, that's good, thank you. You're welcome. I think one of the most important things to remember with that is that with chemiosmotic, whatever you want to call it, uh, oxidative phosphorylation or chemiosmosis or the electron transport chain, they're the exact same system just happening with different proteins in the membrane and different drivers for generating the energy, right? With cellular respiration, the driver is the NADH is coming and dropping off their protons. With photosynthesis, the driver is the light energy that's causing the electrons to be excited on the chlorophylls. And then we get the NADPH, NADP reduced to NADPH and the ATP produced that we can use then for the Calvin cycle. Could you repeat that? Hmm, maybe. <laughs> so that last part. Yes. So, so they're almost, you can think of them as almost like opposites, right? But one of the key similarities, I would focus first on the, after you study them and know all the little moving parts for each of them. And then when you start looking at the big picture and try to start thinking about, okay, what if she asks us what's different about chloroplasts compared to mitochondria? Or what if she asks us which the following things are the same between chloroplasts and mitochondria? That's when you start to have to take a step back and have to look at the big picture and say, okay, both, of, both mitochondria and chloroplasts both generate ATP, okay? One of them generates ATP from using an electron transport chain and protons that are brought to the electron transport chain by NADH, which comes from the oxidation of the glucose. For all of photosynthesis producing the, those, the first part of it, the energy producing part of photosynthesis, light energy, not food, not stored potential chemical energy, light energy is the energy that is coming into the system and driving the photosystems you have to have water to replace those electrons and protons. So you can keep making more ATP. Light's the driver of that system and you're producing ATP and NADH that then is gonna be used in a, to reduce carbon dioxide into glucose. So overall, chapter nine and chapter 10 are opposite sets of reactions. Chapter nine, all the breaking down reactions. Chapter 10, all the building reactions. Better, worse. Better, thank you. All right. All right, so for this first lab activity for the elephant toothpaste, um, as we said before, just uh, go ahead, get out the box, go through the steps, follow the protocol, take a photograph of yourself with the results, showing the results and answer the questions. I will look up what the questions are because I have them somewhere in an email from someone. And uh, then I will post probably a fill in the blank type lab report where it's just like put your data here and you won't have, and then you can just um, enter 
the values that you have. So we'll try that for the first one. It's gonna be super simple for the first one because I just want you all to get the box out, open it up, do one of the labs, and then they get more complicated as we go along. All right, that's all I know for today. Um, other questions that you have, watch the videos for 10. Um, certainly do the homework for 10 since it's due tonight. And I will see you again on Monday. And you have a quiz on Tuesday that's 8, 9, and 10. So spend your time wisely. Study a lot. Use those. I think all of the homeworks are good to practice. You can use them again as practice uh, to study. I think especially the one that I picked for the quiz there, that had a lot of like really honed down summary steps, which I thought was good. All right, other questions, worries, concerns? No, all right, I'm gonna stop the recording. Who knows what we'll get for this recording.